Okay, so now we're going to make a um, a dolman sleeve with a gusset so that we change the angle that this sleeve is coming on and we add a shoulder in here. So I do need to know where your shoulder seam would have originally ended. Okay. As you can see, if you were to cut this out of fabric, you'd probably put the center front on a fold and your bodice and your sleeve becomes all one piece. That's the kimono, sometimes called a bat wing. Depends on how much fabric you add in here. If you were to round this, like right here, then it would be a bat wing, not a kimono. A kimono is a sharper angle. Okay, so from where your shoulder seam would have ended to this intersection right down here at the bottom, you're going to draw a cut line. Then down here on your side seam, right where this intersection at the bottom of your armpit ends, the pattern says to make a mark one inch down. You're working in half scale, so you need to not be at one inch. You need to be at half an inch. And we're just gonna make a mark there on our pattern. This becomes point A this becomes point B. You're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut up through but not to point A and we're gonna drop this line, and shift it until it meets this line. Now that's difficult to do until you cut your paper out. So, and you can cut up here all you want but unless you pivot or rough cut up here to have a pivot point, your paper still isn't gonna shift. So I'm gonna cut an actual, I'm gonna cut a little bit around it, just because if I were going to seam allowance, does that make sense? And then I would cut two, but not through there. I'm just gonna cut out for seam allowance down here at the bottom too, because why not? So, um, do you want us to cut the front away from the back? Yes, at this point, the front and the back will be separate, which is why I trace it out on another sheet of paper. Okay, so now I've got this piece and this piece totally piffs pivots and shifts. And so I just want this new cut line to line up on this mark that I've made down the side seam. So I'm just going to shift until that line lines up right there. Okay. It'll be easier to see if I line it up underneath because I left seam allowance on this. So can you see how where my mark is now my new underarm would meet right there. Okay. Then I'm going to tape it down. Ooh, and that's a smeary graphite piece of tape. Gross. Now we're going to draw a new line for the gusset. And that's why we need to know um, where this new line is down here at the bottom. We're gonna draw from this new intersection here to the intersection at the neck and the shoulder. Not the arms eye and the shoulder, but the neck and the shoulder. So this is our new line. This becomes point C. This is point D. And we've just dropped the angle of this shoulder. That's all we've done. Now, if we were continuing with the sleeve with the gusset, we would decide how long this gusset's gonna be. And this gusset is just filling in a different piece of fabric down in the armpit. 
So the book suggests about three and a half inches. That would be full scale. So for half scale, that would be an inch and three quarter. It's a quarter scale. That's half an inch plus three eighths. Yeah. So that would be seven eighths. All right. So that would be up from D. That would be how long my gusset would be. And I would just mark right there that my gusset. Then I'd put seam allowance and my seam allowance would just be right here on the end. And then I'd have to develop my gusset. My gusset is just going to be a diamond piece, and we're going to use this measurement from D up however tall we made our gusset. That is going to be our determinant factor. So if I were going to make the gusset, I know that I had 7 eighths of an inch long this way. We're just going to use Pythagorean theorem, whatever, which means it's a unilateral triangle or... So whatever distance I have this way, I'm going to have the same amount of distance this way. And then I just complete my triangle. And that's my gusset. And then you would have a slave with a gusset. 